we are connecting to Alan Mangi, one and only, the person who created creation. Hello. Hey, man. How are you? Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm very good. My name is Valeria. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of this platform. All right. Uh, it's really, it's really nice to have you here. I'm trembling with fear. I, I have to tell I'm, this. I'm, 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 I'm incredibly normal. I'll probably disappoint <laughs> you. <laughs> of course you are incredibly normal, but I'm trembling in fear, actually. So, uh, hello, guys. I am just uh, have to tell something to our audience. Today we have Alan McGee, one and only, the co-founder of Creation Records, the one who discovered Oasis, the one who signed My Bloody Valentine, Primal Scream, and all other groups that me, personally... <laughs> Uh, I love, I've been loving them since I was born, I guess. Something like that. Yeah. So how are you doing, Alan? What, what, what are you up to now? I'm just uh, down in Wales. Uh, I've got a place in Wales. That's my view. Oh, so. you, could, you have a better view than I have. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. So, uh, and that's how where I am. I'm, I'm in Wales and uh, I'm seeing... Uh, my missus and I've seen my kids and that's what I'm up to here. So I guess we're gonna start the interview. I'm trembling again, I'm trembling with fear, but we're gonna start. So my first question, Alan, if you will let me ask you this question. What do you feel when you uh, look to your past and what do you feel remembering uh, those times? Remember the time of creation records, the peak of creation records. How do you feel? Do you even understand what you did to the music industry? Yeah, I mean, I, I, thanks for being so kind. I'm, I just put these records out and usually, to be honest, in the 80s, we, we were pretty ignored. Uh, and then I suppose we're pretty ignored now as well. The records are put out now, but... Um, but uh, back in the 90s, it kind of collided with the mainstream. Yeah. And it became a really... The creation in the 80s was... It started in 83. Um, and uh, I uh, I was putting records out. I started the management company in 84, when I started managing the Mary Chain. Uh, I started the publishing company in 88. And they still all exist. And then... Um, you know, uh, that, that was just... I, 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 I had no idea that they, they sort of became famous in the in Japan and the West Coast of America in the yeah. 80s, you know. But then when the Oasis thing happened, it went, you know. But, but with the scream and the fan club and, and Valentine's, it became a bit more an international thing. But by the time it got to Oasis, that became really a big international hit, and it was like mm -hmm. number one. And I think, you know, at one point in '95, it was number one one week. Uh, in 32 countries and it was just insane we sold a lot of records with oasis and it became like people like yourself in russia they all knew creation because of that band really i think we were kind of culty but the mainstream russian people got oasis as well i mean that would mean we were big well that i was in the band obviously you know i was just putting the records out but that band got big everywhere it was crazy you know yeah that's crazy and talking uh, from the Russian audience and talking from uh, the younger audience because I'm just 25 years old <laughs> and uh, yeah we want to say thank you to you because that's crazy because uh, Oasis and Primal Scream and My Bloody Valentine it's like you know uh, when talking about uh, the common culture the painters talking about the painters the movies you know the, uh, that um, the culture court of, yeah. uh, uh, and o o Oasis and uh, the grubs that came from your label. It's like uh, they uh, became the part of the culture court of the whole generation, of the whole 80s generation, 90s generation and our generation. Because when I heard, I, I'm talking personal here, I'm not the interviewer, I'm not the journalist, I'm just talking from my younger generation with you. Yeah, and uh, for us, when I first heard about Oasis, I didn't know their music. I was like 14 or 15, I don't even remember. But actually it was like, yeah, Oasis, I didn't 
even knew that uh, I didn't even knew their songs, but I was like, yeah, Oasis, they're like, they're, they're the top group. Yeah, of course I know them. <laughs> Actually, I didn't, know, I didn't know them, but it's like they're in the culture code. And uh, you are one of the, like, you are the rare gem. You are the one of, like, the person who did this, uh, who, uh, like, brought some uh, great uh, groups uh, to the culture court of uh, the humanity. And that's crazy. Do you even understand that? Yeah, I mean, I just put the records out. I mean, that's all really. I'm just a, a guy that, you know, puts records out, manages bands. And but, but I suppose when you get a really massive one, what Superstar one, uh, you, it sort of, it changes the changes forever the way people are going to see a certain thing, what the creation label, you know. But because it yeah. was so much more than just one band, but it's, that band, don't get me wrong, I still love that band, I look away. But it's like, we, we, it's, it, creation's a sort of, it's a thing that I've done since the 80s, really, since 1983, I've been doing it, and uh, I'm still doing it. It's called Creation 23, Creation Management still exists. I manage some bands. We will so, gonna talk about this. Yeah, yeah, and then, about, and, and, we and, then, and, and, and the Creation songs, I still publish records for the. The 80s and the 90s, like My Bloody Valentine and Primal Scream yeah. and all these bands, oh. you know. Yeah, for our audience, just My Bloody Valentine, Loveless album. <laughs> <laughs> my Bloody Valentine. Okay, guys, slow dive, slow dive, guys. <laughs> just for you to people. We're in Russia, you are you? Talk... We're in Russia. What? We're in Russia, are you? In Moscow? Yeah. Right now, right, right, right. What time? What time is it in Moscow? Is it midnight in Moscow? No, no, no. It's ten p.m. in Moscow. Oh, so you know, two, two hours ahead, right? Okay. And no, it's just two p.m. And I'm gonna tell you that uh, your label is very famous in Russia, uh, and I've, it has. I've only been to Russia one time, and I've, I've DJed in Saint Petersburg, uh, and it was an insane show. It was a, a I, I was just getting over anemia and. Uh, I got then, and then I got this offer to go out that Friday to do a DJ set in St. Petersburg. And uh, I played to like this really weird audience. It was only about 200. But I, th I think the tickets were really expensive because I know my fee, and it was like a really good fee and uh, for like an hour, an hour DJ set. So God knows what they were paying, you know. Uh, but I, I went to St. Petersburg and then I stayed the weekend in St. Petersburg. And it was it it was kind of crazy. I nearly got knocked down by a horse. There was some. Mm -hmm. I think he might have been a cop, but some guy rode a rode a horse right past me on the pavement in St Petersburg. This is St Petersburg, yeah. I think yeah, it was. St. I think it was two thousand, and I'm going to guess and say two thousand and five or six. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was a long time ago. It was about fifteen years ago. Do you know what I mean? So after the creation label was over, yeah, 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 yeah. It was mad, and then they, they 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 pay me quite a good fee. Well, it was a really good fee actually, right? And then uh, to come out, and they flew me out. They put me out in this hotel. It was a really, it was the best. I think it was the best hotel in St Petersburg. It was like up in the wall. It was like George Bush has stayed here. This was the time of George Bush and. It was all that kind. I think Bill Clinton had stayed there, so it was a mad hotel that I was staying at, and I stayed for three or four days. And uh, and then I saw the whole St Petersburg, but I, you know. But then, then I, they they'd said to me, "You can play any set that you want," and I went, "Okay." And I went along with all my CDs, and then uh, luckily I brought an eighties an eighties hits thing because just before I was going to go on, there was about a six foot six security guard bodyguard guy came up and went, "You will play the hits." And I went, no, I'm going to play what you asked me. I'm, when you, you booked me, went, no, you will play the hits. I went, I play the hits. And then I, I, I had to play all the 80s <laughs> kind of hits. And then the, 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 it was a mad night. I don't know why they booked me. I mean, it was a crazy night, really. And uh, and uh, at a certain point, uh, I I was trying to put on Prince, because it was, a, it was I basically DJed off a... 40 hits for the 80s mm -hmm. kind of thing. It was, but it was all the cool hits in the 80s. And um, it was the only hits thing that I'd actually got with me. And, and uh, hang on, just get my phone right. And uh, I put on, I tried to put on Prince 
uh, sign of the times. And I ended up putting mm-hmm. on the weather girls. It's raining men. And all these mad Russian people just went mental. <laughs> so it was a Went mental. Mad that's... Day. It was a mad that's day. That's the it, word. It wasn't an indie thing. It was all guys in, like, 2,000 pound suits. It was crazy night. And I think they must have been paying 500 a ticket or something. Because there was only about 200 of them. And I know they paid, they paid me thousands, you know. So it was like, God knows. But I, I'm really happy that you brought up the DJ uh, theme. Uh, I wanted to ask you about DJ, all that DJ thing. Why did you even get involved in DJing? Why? I After just liked days, it. Uh, well, I just liked it because I was running a club called Death Disco. And, um, yeah. and I, I, was, I was DJing. I sort of learned to DJ at that because, because at that club, I kind of, I wasn't brilliant back I just used to get offered to go, oh, do you want to go to Istanbul? Do you want to go to Tokyo? Do you want to go? And I, saw, I just saw it as a kind of fun thing to do. You know what I mean? Sometimes, you know, they paid you really crazy money as well. But mainly I was going just to travel around the world. And I thought it was a bit of fun. Mm-hmm. So it's just a fun thing for you. Okay. So yeah, talking man. about producing things, because you are one of the greatest producers out in this music industry in the whole world so i was actually uh, wanted to ask you about um i uh, i did a big research about you like a huge research and i uh, uh. actually uh, saw in huffington post because uh, you had a blog in huffington post uk yeah it wasn't and, very uh, good uh, i'm not a very good writer yeah it, it's not I very good it's pretty good it's not very good no i think I think I think you're pretty good, and yeah, I think you're pretty good. Um, and you actually, uh, you wrote that um, if you are a friend, though, uh, as I still enjoy DJing, I will play the music for nothing or for a small fee. So it's like it's it's like something you're passionate about. Passionate. Oh about. yeah, yeah, I love doing all that. I love to. You've done your research. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't read any of these blogs for years, but. Um, but um, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, sometimes if if I'm friends with somebody, I'll I'll just show up and you know get me a hotel and get me the train fare, and I'll go and DJ for them. Do you know what I mean? You know? Yeah, I understand. So talking about your past, because yeah. uh, I can't escape uh, asking you about your past because some huge things happened in your past. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, in the Huffington Post UK, you wrote that I, I never loved music the way my friends like Bobby Gillespie, Joe Foster and Andrew Ines did. I found out now by default that I was good at selling their music. So you <laughs> actually... So true. I, yeah, I, I'm interested. Uh, uh, I love music I, a lot. Always... I, do love, I, do, I really love the music, but... But I suppose my forty really was much more like taking the idea and finding a way to make people like the idea. Do you know what I mean? You know, so maybe that's what I was good at. Yeah. You know? But it feel for me, it feels like uh, you have this special power that not uh, all uh, producers have. Uh, you can see the bright future of some gra- of some groups, even if they don't see it. And even uh, when some people don't see it, some uh, sound producers don't see it. But you, uh, it it was with Primal Scream. After six and a half years, they <laughs> recorded their greatest album. Uh, yeah. after, uh, the same with Oasis. You just met them. And you, uh, as I know, you asked the people who organized the concert, the geek, you asked them, why don't this grab? Let them, let them perform. So it's like, do you have this feeling? What, what is that? Do you have this superpower? Do you have this no, feeling? No, it's not superpower. I just, I just like music. When I signed Oasis, for instance, I had no idea that they were superstars. I, I just thought they were a good band. And Primal Scream, I grew up with Bobby and, and Andrew yes. and Throb. I grew up with these guys. You know, we all come from the same area. We, we all went to the same school. Yeah. And I just... You were playing know, football together. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But me and Bobby back in the day. So... I just put the records out, you know, and then I, if they hadn't been so close to me as people, maybe after two or three years that I went, 
it's not working because it did take a long time for me to start having hits with that band. But um, mm -hmm. but they, when they when the hits came, they 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 got really big, you know. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Uh, so I have another question for you, um, and uh, this is from. I'm sorry, I have lots of <laughs> lots of paper. I'm really sorry, but I was preparing like for a week. No problem. Even if I. If I know, I know your rules since I was like 15, but I was preparing. And uh, I, uh, the most important thing uh, for our audience, because our audience is, uh, it's very young. It's very young people. And some, right. uh, lots of people, uh, they are into music and they want to create some bands. Uh, they want to promote them. Are music. you a magazine in Russia uh, then? Is that what you do? Is it? Are you a No, you... it's not, not. It's not a magazine. We are the is platform. Uh, we are doing some research we are doing yeah. documentaries about musicians we are doing like live yeah. talks with musicians so we are researchers actually so oh, brilliant. we yeah. came from the music uh, science uh, i've studied music industry in the university so i wrote like some um, master dissertation about music in All russia right. actually so we wanted to do something great we wanted to uh, explore the 90s the 80s the 70s because yeah. uh, i don't know like I'm not sure how you think about our generation, but we're actually we are really aware of what happened in the past, and we really appreciate what you did, what uh, the grubs that uh, has been have been on your record label did to oh, the music you. industry. So it's like like really appreciate the past. Oh, thank and you. Uh, so yeah, so my question is. Um, as uh, our uh, audience is uh, like our audience is very young, so uh, right now, as you know, uh, we are very conscious about mental health. About so we are a bit toothless. So we are conscious about mental health, about uh, avoiding drugs, etc., etc., etc. So um, I know uh, you you cannot answer this question if it's uncomfortable for you. But I wanted to no, talk no a questions bit, uncomfortable. A bit. Just ask you, all right. Uh, I wanted to talk a bit about your father because uh, mental mental health and uh, some violence from the parents uh, is uh, it's it's very it's a very common thing, and um, I know that your father wasn't the best uh, father in the world, yeah. and I know that he was a bit violent. And I wanted to ask you, I'm, I'm really sorry for this, but Ed, I wanted to ask you about uh, after, cre after creating the creation label, after achieving some of your goals, have you ever thought about uh, his uh, influence uh, on you? Have you ever thought maybe, okay, maybe I'm doing this because I want to prove him that I'm not like yeah. him, that I'm not from working class, that yeah. I'm better than this. Yeah, well, I'm working class, but it's like a, I think, a, yeah, I mean, I think most people are driven by their childhood, to be absolutely honest, and a lot of things, and I'm definitely driven by my childhood. But, but the, tr the truth is, I haven't spoke to my dad in years, like literally, When's the last time I saw him? I've, I've, see, I think I saw him once or twice in 20 years, so I barely talked to him. You know, I think I saw him about eight years ago. So we were not close, you know. I mean, you know, it's, it's just the way it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, I understand this. But actually, as I've seen it on your Instagram, you are uh, a great father. Oh, thank to, you. <laughs> to beautiful children, to your daughter, to a younger daughter, and to your elder son. Yeah, and what about his? I know that he had a group called Flat. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's a wee singer. I think he might be getting a new band together. He, he was telling me last week that it might be a uh, he, he might be the singer in some new band with some guy in a, a toy, and I think they're going to try and sound like the, the des Desperate Bicycles, which would be good because Desperate Bicycles are great, you know. So I think he's good. Does he treat you? Does he treat you as uh, a producer? Uh, maybe oh, you I'm have some advice. Just, I'm just, you know, his dad, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, proper, I mean, I mean, you know, we, we got on pretty well, though, for father and son. We're getting on, I mean, we didn't used to get on because I never brought him up, but uh, but we got on great now, you know, so it's good. 
And uh, talking again about uh, the younger generation, since 2000s, uh, we didn't have the new genre coming. Uh, and the new, the what new do you think about the, the new, the new genre? The new oh, music genre. genre. Yeah. All right, yeah, 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 the new music genres. And what do you think about that? Why didn't we have uh, some new music music genres? Maybe it's because it's not that, like, because seventies, eighties, and nineties was like huge uh, eras. Uh, it was like seventies was the golden era, and eighties uh, was the golden era, and so many, so many great musicians uh, came from these eras. And what about uh, our time? Why don't we have, why uh, music industry doesn't have these uh, great musicians? What, what's our route? How do you, how do you feel it? How do you see it? I mean, I come down for about a week a month, so I think, and uh, you know, I, like, I, I don't have in London, and where I live, I live in London nearly all the time now, and uh, I don't have a CD player, but when I was down, uh, what was incredible was that, uh, um, you know, the last the last night uh, I was playing CDs, sitting watching telly, or you know, like just kicking back, having a little bit of food, and uh, uh, the ritual of putting a CD on is bloody great, you know. And I and I don't, I've never really liked CDs, but it's like it's kind of more fulfilling yeah. than Spotify, to be honest. You know what I mean? You know, and and it's it's great that when you when you you know, you do the ritual of putting... I was playing Gillian Welsh. I don't expect you'll know who that is, but uh, Times Revelator, that record. And it was great just putting the CD on. And, and then I put on another band, called an American band, kind of similar to Gillian Welsh, called Low. And, uh, you know, L-O-W. And uh, it was great just physically holding music. It was There's it a lot to be said for it, you know? So you're always in search for some great uh, music bands or something like that. So I love. Uh, I mean, I've got a lot of records, and and I mean, I've got. I mean, I've just put Clockworks out yesterday. Who are an incredible band. I mean, they're as good as the bands I signed. At, when I, you know, in, in, in the late eighties, they're, they're as good as your House of Loves and your My Bloody Valentine's. They're just a brilliant mm -hmm. band. And they, have, they, they people don't know who they are yet, but they they will eventually get it. I think because such a good band, great songwriters. Uh, I just put their single out yesterday, uh, and at the moment because all the press implants have gone bust, uh, so you know, so I'm not even doing these records as vinyl. I'm just putting them up and hiring the plugger, hiring the streaming person, hiring the PR, and I just control it and I, I make the records for the band. Um, so that came out. Then in October, I've got Shambolics. Uh, November, I've got Clockworks and Cat SFX, who's this amazing girl that I've uh, ran into. She's a kind of punk, punk hero kind of girl. Uh, got, an, got an opinion about it. Great person. Uh, and, then, and then next year, I've got a lot of different records coming. Do you know what I mean? So it's kind of a good time. You know, I've got this great guy from Stornoway called Charlie Clark, who I ran into when I was doing a QA and a up in in Scot uh, up in Scotland and uh he's going through some personal family stuff at the moment. So but when that all that passes, uh I'm gonna fly up and then we're gonna plan. That may well be mm -hmm. the first album I put out. I'm not tr I've not been trying to put albums out, but his record is so exceptional. It's such a great record that I that and he wants me to put it out, so I'm probably gonna end up putting that out, you know. Right now is what you do. I I know that you're releasing uh, the single each month. Am I right? Yeah, each month. Yeah, I mean, we'll still have one next month, but we just we've put out in lockdown. The future's mm -hmm. not what it was. The clockworks, Cat SFX, Doom Generation, which should have got more attention than it did. Although it did okay, but it's such an incredible record. And then I just put out. Can I speak to a manager? By the clockworks, so I put out three during lockdown, and then yeah, I've, yeah. Got, I've got another three coming before the end of the year. You know. And you have a great story with the clockworks because they're. Uh, as for uh, me, they're a great band, and you have a yeah, they're really amazing. fun they're, they're, with them. I met them on Instagram, weirdly, and uh, yeah, and because I've been in the NME, this is about a year ago, and uh, mm -hmm. I'd said, oh, like, uh, you know, just send me your music on a direct message, and uh, and then Sean, who's like an incredible person, just wrote to me and said, Alan, like, listen to listen to us, we're like the punk rock version, the Irish punk rock, they said, the Irish punk rock version of the streets. And it kind of appealed to me because I love the streets and I, 
And I went, oh, I'll have it a, really have a sounds lesson. like and the then, punk rock version of the street. Uh, he'd sent me Bills and Pills, which is an amazing first single. And uh, it was amazing. It was there. And uh, we, we put it out, you know. And it's, it, 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 you mean, it's, it's, I mean, it's difficult for these young bands to break through with no, no shows because nobody's doing any gigs. But I've got a real good yeah. feeling that, that it's, I mean, I, I want to. I'm probably going to end up doing an album with them as well. We've just been talking this weekend, and I mean, I'm like, I'm, I'm literally, apart from the parents, I'm probably the biggest fan. You know what I mean? Yeah, I understand. And you always tell uh, to interviews uh, that Creation Twenty Three is like a hobby, and you're it is a kind of hobby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah, it's a, it's a really the... lovable hobby, but it is a hobby, you know. But hopefully, one day. We'll sell lots of records and it'll make sense as a business. But at the moment, I'm just doing it because I want to do it. You know what I mean? And uh, in all the interviews, you tell that it's impossible to achieve or uh, grouse to achieve the success of uh, Oasis. But I think uh, so. Yeah, but probably you can find the grub that uh, will be not like Oasis, but something like something. But uh, success not like hasn't Oasis. Se Success isn't sales, though. Success mm -hmm. is actually enjoying doing something. Do you know I mean, that's, to me, mm -hmm. success. I mean, I'm really happy running the label on my own. I mean, to be more effective as a record company, I could probably... Because I, I, had, I had a partner, and he, he left because he, he, he thought yeah, was, there was no money in music anymore, which he's probably right, you know. But um, so I just do it myself. Um, but, you know... I, I mean, I really enjoy it. So I would say, as long as I'm enjoying doing it, that's success. Do you know what I mean? You know, I mean, I'd, I'd say that's that, that that's the way it is. You know. Yeah, I understand this. I understand this, and I hope you will be doing this till the end of the times. Uh, <laughs> you're you're doing. Well, I'm doing... I'm sixty in two months. I'm sixty in two months. Well, you are young. That means you are young. <laughs> I'm not young. I'm old, but. But I'm kind of enjoying, I'm kind of into being 60, which is even weirder. Because I remember when I turned 50, I didn't enjoy that. But when I'm, I'm, it's almost like a badge of honor that I've survived this long, you know? So it's good. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But what they're actually talking about uh, the young generation and being young, what did you feel when you started uh, running the label at 23? 23, right now. 20, 20, like, I, think like I, was 20, I think I was, I think I was 22, actually. 22. Um, even what did it feel years. like? I think it was like, I don't think I knew what I was doing. I didn't know what I was doing. I could press the records up and everything. But I don't think I actually had a plan. And If somebody had said it's going to become this massive independent label and then yeah. you know, they're going to, you know, people are going to talk about it years, you know, forever, you know, people are, well, you know, they're going to be talking about it for your whole life. I, I would never mm -hmm. saw that coming. You know, I was just putting records out uh, and it was, it, we, we got off to a sort of crap start in the beginning because we put out my friend Jerry Thackeray's record, The Legend, and it wasn't very good. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, but it got, it got better, the label. The label got better with time, you know. Yeah. And you brought us, uh, you brought up some of uh, one of the greatest showcase uh, groups, showcase bands. Yeah. And uh, maybe uh, I've been to your. Well, we put uh, we put out a few. We 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 had everybody really we, because we I signed the Valentines and then I became obsessed yeah. with my bloody Valentine, and then I just started signing Ride, Swerve Driver, Telescopes, yeah. Moonshake. Who else in that genre? I mean, it was, it was a lot. I'm probably forgetting one. Genre, yeah, there you know. are a lot, lots of great bands. And slow uh, dive. I went. Slow dive. How can I forget slow, slow dive? dive. Uh, I mean, they were great as well. They were school kids when I signed them. You know, I know they're great. But that's it. <laughs> I actually I went to your Spotify playlist, uh, and uh, there are like seventy-four right. hours of uh, music, and that's like that's <laughs> crazy, and that's but great. Tell you what that really is. I I'll tell you what that is. I, I used to, I mean, before COVID, I had a radio show, right, in England, in London, called at Boogaloo. And I used to, I had, I, I, if I liked anything, I put it on that playlist. You know, so I'd hear something and go, I'll, I'll nick it for the playlist. So that's why it's 74 hours of music, you know. Uh, it's because everything's on there so that I just go. I don't that's a great gift for us. And so when I'm DJing, 
the DJ off the computer, and then I can just go, well, oh, look through it and, and pick one. So that's really uh, that's really why the playlist exists, because it's from a radio show, really, you know. Yeah, and I actually saw some yeah. of uh, great uh, hip hop stars, some Kendrick Lamar or something like that. So you actually yeah. you you are into all kind of music genres. Am I right? Yeah, it was it was my it was my son that got me into Kendrick Lamar. He's a little hip hop. Oh. He's young. He's thirty one. And uh, Dan, my kid, uh, he was the one that was banging on about Kendrick about two years ago or three years ago. And I just started listening. I mean, I kind of like a load of that, what do you want to call it, progressive hip-hop, I think. So we yeah. Name, you know what I mean? And uh, I like loads of it. I really like Kendrick. Uh, I love Kanye. I mean, you yeah. know, I'm not trying to be like an old guy trying to be young. I'm just saying I like them as, as pop songs. You know what I mean? I mean, I like, I like what I like, you know? I think music has no age. Like... Yeah. Uh, probably not, you know. Yeah. As long as I, I don't mean, dance. Yeah. As long as I don't and, dance. Uh, actually, talking about hip hop and pop, uh, I wrote, um, I read your, one of your blogs in, I guess, Huffington Post, uh, where 10 years ago you predicted that Beyonce will replace Madonna and will become the queen of the pop scene. And actually, who, who 10 years ago. Who did I say? Uh, I um, you wrote that ten years ago, in two thousand and ten, you wrote that Beyonce oh, might yeah, yeah. Uh, replace Madonna yeah. as the pop star or the pop queen. She, oh, that, that's that, a good prediction. It kind of happens, you know. It happened, yeah, <laughs> and that's crazy because ten years ago, like, I haven't. I was 15, but I, I I was into Beyonce and I was into Madonna and uh, I haven't read articles about Beyonce being the pop queen after 10 years and you predicted yeah. that. So you still yeah. have this ability in your in the film about you in the Upside Down. Um, everyone is talking. Everyone are talking about your ability to feel uh, the success of the group, even. It will be in six years, in seven years, in eight years. Um, how how do you feel? Uh, how nowadays uh, producers should work? What is their job? Well, I, I think we're just having a language thing. I don't think I'm really. I, in, 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 I'm not. A, I'm not a producer. Producer. I'm not Trevor yes, Horn, but I'm a curator. If, 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 I suppose that was a better word for it. I'm a curator of a label and, like, you know, I suppose I do other things like I curate a radio show or I curate, um, I curate a management company, I suppose. And so that's kind of more what we would call it. You'd be called what I do is more curation, you know. Um, but, yeah, I mean, look, it's just, I'm just a music lover. and I mean, I, you know, I've never got bored with actual music. Do you know what I mean? So it's, that's, that in itself is why I've managed to... Uh, you know, I've managed to so stick it's it. Kind of your, you know I mean? It's like your inner, inner sense. It's like you love music. You feel that this is a great group, this is a great group, and uh, this is a great band, and you have to promote them or something like that. And you don't know what will happen next. Am I right? Yeah, nobody ever does. So you know, you, you it's, I think the only thing you can do is that you, the only thing you really want to do with music, if you're in a job or like that I do, which is like doing a record label and managing bands you just got to, if you believe it you've just got to work with it and hopefully you get an audience for the band you know that's yeah. some of the sometimes a lot of the early 80s and 90s stuff the a lot of these bands are still around not because creation was great or i was great just because they're actually good bands we chose good groups and and and, and that's why they're still around do you know what i mean you know i mean you yeah know, I understand. suppose creation yeah. makes it more interesting in some ways because it's, it's this cookie label that signed everything. But but the real truth is, the reason that somebody like Slow Dive was still around is not because of creation, because they're actually good, you know? Yeah, but your creation mates, uh, they told in the documentary, in the interviews, uh, that you have you have this, like, you didn't care uh, what other people think, what other people thought. You were no, like... No. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no fucks given, as uh, Noel Gallagher told in one of his interviews, no fucks given. And you were like, I want this. Yeah, I yeah. want to make this. I want to yeah. sign that. 
And I yeah. don't give well, a they, damn I never about signed, I never signed bands, you know, for anybody else other than me, really. I didn't even sign them for the bands. I signed them because I, I thought it was good and I was going to, I suppose I was curating my own idea of what creation was. Do you know what I mean? And, and I was just putting these records out. Luckily, they connected. Do you know what I mean? You know, so everybody looks clever after the, yeah. the band connects. But it was, I don't think it was particularly clever. It was just me being a music obsessive. But my heroes are people like Seymour Stein, that's a guy that's much older than me, to be honest. About 75. My, Malcolm McLaren. Uh, Malcolm. I love Malcolm McLaren. And Andrew Lee Goldham, the Stones, and uh, Tony Wilson. And these are the people that I like, you know what I mean? You know, that, that, you know, that I think, oh, they were a better version of me before me, you know what I mean, you know? Yeah, I understand. But do you think that, um, because 70s, 80s and 90s was like, it was the burst of uh, the rock scene, the pop scene, uh, yeah. the grunge scene. Uh, I know that you love uh, Kurt Cobain. I know that yeah. you... Yeah. 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 I, love, I, I, I mean, I love Kurt. Uh, I mean, and I love, I mean, I love... Um, yeah, I just love that. I mean, there was they just made great records, so great, great pop records. You know what I mean? You know. Yeah, and do you feel that in uh, nowadays it is possible for our generation, like not not us, but people who do their music, uh, to to leave an imprint on the music industry, to leave the same imprint as you left? Is it even possible? Uh, for bands uh, of nowadays to be as legendary as My Bloody Valentine was, Oasis, Beatles, well, and stuff I, like yeah, that. I think, I think, like, I mean, Kanye, somebody like Kanye is the biggest rock star in the world at the moment, isn't he? Do you know what I mean? And he's like a total legend. He's a big man. Totally, I, I just don't think, I don't think people are looking towards rock and roll bands anymore. I Hopefully yeah. it will swing back and people will be interested again in rock and roll bands. But, but, uh, but somebody like Kanye is... Even though he's doing like arguably what you call it, progressive hip hop, he's essentially a rock star. Yeah. And he, all the drama that big rock stars have, you know, whether it's beating Donald Trump or standing for the standing to be the president or his life with Kim Kardashian. I mean, it's pretty dra it's pretty drama driven, isn't it? You know what I mean? And then the bonus with that guy is that you know he's he's brilliant as well. You know, musically brilliant. You know. Yeah, and lyrical, lyrically, he's brilliant. Uh, he actually reminds me of Sex Pistols. Like, uh, one day he tells uh, that he loves Trump, next yeah. day he tells everyone that he hates Trump, and next day he's starting a cult. It's so uh, bad, yeah. It's, he's a rock star, yeah. Even yeah, being yeah, yeah. in hip-hop industry, he's a rock star. Yeah. And uh, but you are still uh, on your creation 23 and uh, the creation management. You are still into post punk in rock music, yeah? Am I right? Yeah, man. Yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, so I was listening to I was listening to a band last night, The Green and Blues yeah. by uh, by Murder Capital. They're Irish as well. Ireland's incredible at the moment. It's got Fontaine's DC. It's got Clockworks. It's got Murder Capital. You know. It's, you know, it's great. I, I, was, I mean, I don't really dig the music of Inhaler. It's not for me. But, I mean, they are happening. Nobody can deny that they're happening, you know. So there is some good stuff coming to Ireland, you know. There, or, or, or even better, there's some stuff that's actually happening. I feel sorry. More than anything, I feel sorry for the young bands. Yeah. Because the older bands have all got their music out there and, you know, it's going to be okay for them. But the young bands are... You know, I mean, it's difficult to be taken off the road when you're. It's something like Clockworks. It was like there, there were like two songs in, and then there were like, you know, COVID came along, and you know, now they can't put records. Well, they can put records out, but they can't tour. You know, what I mean, it's just. I mean, luckily they've got they work with me, and I am putting records out. But a lot of people are not even putting records out at the moment. You know. And talking about Clockworks and all other bands from uh, Creation Twenty Three, who's your favorite band? What on what and in creation? If it's proper, yeah. I, don't know, I mean, I can't say. I mean, it's like you know, it's like I, I, I don't really. I mean, I love Clockworks, but I mean, I think Shambolics are fucking great. Um, you mm -hmm. know, I love Cat SFX. So it's like I don't really, I don't really have a favorite. I just like I like different. I mean, Charlie Clapp's fucking great. 
I mean, I like what I like. Do you know I mean, I wouldn't, you wouldn't let you on the label if I wasn't into it. There'd be no point, you know. Yeah, and uh, talking about uh, your record label now and uh, talking about the past, uh, in the interview uh, this July, uh, you told that back in the 80s it was good, but the bands probably weren't as ripe as the ones I'm oh, getting yeah, yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what was the problem well, with them? No, well, What's the well, difference? Well, what it was was back in the 80s when we were signing... We we made some great bands, but nobody wanted these bands when I was signing them. And back in the day, like the Loft and the Primals and the Mary Chain and um, the X Men and the Pastels and you know, it felt nobody wanted these bands back in the day. Now you look back and, and these bands are kind of regarded as classic indie bands, but but back in the day, in the nineteen eighty four or nineteen eighty three, when I was putting the records out initially nobody wanted these bands none of them could get arrested you know yeah i understand this but right yeah, whereas, now what but, we, but, but whereas now i mean we got off to a flying start with that band rubber jaw but it's in a store it's maybe the best record i've put out yet on creation 23 but that was Oh, we're having some problems with the connection. Ask him the most important question. Hello again. We're, I'm really sorry. I don't You're know right, what man. happened. I don't, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so guys, we have 15 more minutes. Uh, to end. Actually, uh, some of our Indian followers uh, wanted to tell you that they love creation records. Oh, so right. I had, yeah, I've never, I had to I've never been to India. You've never been to India. You, I no, guess you have to. I guess you have to. So, uh, my uh, one of my uh, main questions. So, what is happening at Creation Management right now? What is happening? I know you have Black Grapes. Uh, what is happening right now? Well, we just we manage a few bands. Uh, Happy Mondays, Black Grape. Um, uh, we've just taken on the View. Um, that's a Scottish band, uh, cast. Uh, you know, I co manage I co manage Las Vegas uh, with somebody uh, who's uh, up there uh, in Scotland. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I manage five bands. Yeah. So what do you do for them? I'm just try and I suppose ultimately try and make money for them. Do you know what I mean? If in a nutshell, uh, try and. Try and make it that their, their business is a is a makes sense, you know. Yeah. So as we have fifteen or now thirteen minutes more, uh, we had an interview with um, Christopher Beck, um, the producer, the sound manager who worked with uh, the Knife and who worked with Depeche Mode, and when he uh, when we asked him about. Um, uh, the work of producer, the work of production, and the work of the person who helps the group to rise, etc., etc., etc. He told us uh, that uh, the producer um, and uh, the band, the band, uh, it's always someone, or the musician, it's always someone who uh, at one point take a risk, who at one point says, okay, I'm going to do this, and you can't dub, the, you can't dub this. I'm going to do this because I believe in this. And the producer and the production and the whole team and the label, they tell him, okay, we're going to do this, but we're going to add, we're going to add uh, some, some points. We're going to add yeah, this, yeah. So we're gonna, this yeah. sound. So what is the best, um, what is the golden ratio? What, what, what is the best uh, part of uh, collaborating uh, of... Uh, uh, the production company, the label, and uh, the artists. Well, I just do. I just, I just put records out, you know, and uh, and it's a, it's just one of these things. It's like sometimes you end up being the manager, uh, sometimes you end up being the record label, sometimes you end up being the publisher. Do you know what I mean? You know, you, you don't really know what, what your relationship with end is going to ever be. You kind, you fight, you kind of work it out, you know, and. Um, what do you enjoy the best? At the moment, I'm really enjoying the label, but I mean, but I love working with the bands that I work with. Do you know what I mean? You know, I 
I mean, I absolutely love some of the band. I love, I love every band I manage, you know. Yeah, and uh, uh, was it easy to work with uh, uh, Oasis? Because I know that... Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody says interview... that they were difficult. They weren't, they weren't a particularly difficult band. I mean, they were really ambitious, do you know what I mean, you know? And uh, I, mean, I, was only, I, I, I was a publisher and I was putting the records out mm -hmm. with that. After, so I published them and I was the record company. And... Um, but Marley, they already had it. Well, they, they, they actually they got me before they got the manager, but then they had the manager all the way through it. And he was a great manager, so it worked really great, you know. I mean, and they were just ambitious people, you know. So and they, 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 want, they wanted to be successful, you know. What I mean, you know. Yeah. Yes, Noel Gallagher said one, in one of the interview, and uh, in one of the interview, you told that uh, the hardest uh, band uh, to work with was uh, the Libertines. Oh yeah, that... yeah. Well, I, mean, yeah. I was just the manager for them. But, you know, I only managed them for two or three years. But uh, yeah, they were very difficult. I mean, they were kids at the time. They were they were only about twenty three, I think, when I was managing them, and I was I was much older than they. I was about early forties, but. It, it, yeah, they were a great band, though. You know, and that version of the band, the second album, was phenomenal. You know. And I'm really sorry for this question, but I have to ask this because uh, lots of uh, musicians of nowadays they do the same thing. Uh, talking about the drug addic drug addiction, uh, do you think that right now you are retired and you like you're clean? And I'm really happy for you. That's a great thing. <laughs> Uh, to see you here because one of the interviewers of the television uh, once told you that uh, I hope you will be doing your thing till you are dead like that that <laughs> was like kind of a, an inappropriate thing and um, I wanted to ask you do you think that drugs helped you uh, to have the vision like more to be more open-minded or something like that yeah, to help you they did, they did to be honest but I mean I mean I'm not, I'm not sure that you know, I'm not sure I should ever really I went into it just as far into the, the drinking the drugs thing that I did, but but I don't think I would ever have got acid house without ecstasy. Do you know what I mean? So it was it was great. I mean, me getting into that, I got Bobby into that and Screamadelica happened. So, you know, that was that was worth doing on a lot of levels, but but I'm not sure that I would have got acid house without ecstasy, you know what I mean? Yeah. There has yeah. And my last question actually. Okay. Oh, some uh our followers uh, wanted to tell you that I could listen to Alan for hours. Same oh, thank for you. Us. Same for us. Uh, so my last question, actually, what could you recommend to the younger generation, to our generation, uh, that want to do music and probably some of the bands, they want to be big, to be huge and not as huge as Oasis, but probably bigger. <laughs> I don't know. Well, the main, the main thing is I mean, it's just rehearse. Like every night, something, somebody like Oasis, they got good because for two years before they met me, they they, they were around from ninety one, and I never met them to May ninety three. And No Gallagher has told me a lot of different times they used to rehearse five times a week, and they got the rehearsal room in Manchester, which was the. Uh, the the boardwalk underneath the the, the little uh, the little venue, and they had a room. All the a Mank bands, I think the Mondays had a, a place there, a certain ratio. Oasis had a place there, and they used to go in every night and rehearse in that room, and uh, that's why they got good. That's why they became a great great band. So his advice to young musicians: rehearse like fuck, basically. And if you get if you can do the set of songs in your sleep you're probably going to do good gigs do you know what i mean you know yeah and I, i'm really sorry but two more questions all right more questions oh, because we have this in the comment section uh hey alan uh stuck and staying someone from germany i guess uh ask you do you still make money from oasis records did i make money yeah 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 yeah, yeah did you you still Oh, that's great. Oh, and, do, I still, uh, do I still or did I? So what, what was the question? Did I make money? Do, do you still make no, money from No, no. I, I had the publishing up till uh -huh. 2011, and then it reverted back to no. But, uh, but I think it's okay. You know I mean? I mean you can't, nobody can be greedy, you know what I mean? I mean, I had a great run with that band. But yeah, yeah no, no, no I, made a lot, I made a lot of money at the publishing. It was great. 
So, and two more small, really small questions. Yeah, man. 30, uh, from me, actually. Uh, the first question, uh, if Oasis, uh, someday uh, they will be reunited together, uh, how do you think uh, it will be good for them or not? I said, if, I mean, we'd all love to see them talking as brothers and then we'd love to see them all back doing something. But, you know, I don't know where that is. I, if I was being honest, I don't see it anytime soon. So who knows, you know? And uh, I heard in your documentary about Creation Records that you, at the end of Creation Records, you were trying to, fi you was trying to find uh, the band who, who was a little bit like the Blur. So who won the war? <laughs> no, all it was was uh, in the middle of the nineties. I found Super Furry Animals. Well, somebody brought me Super Furry Animals, and they were playing their second or third show. They did a couple of records out in this little Welsh label somewhere out there, and, uh, mm -hmm. and it, it, on Angst Records. And uh, I think it was God Show Me Magic, but I might be wrong. And uh, it was, and, and it might have been sang in Welsh. I suspect it was. And uh, I can't remember it though. And uh, I, but they, 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 I put them in for demos, and they done this song called "Something for the Weekend," and uh, I loved it. And uh, and I, I signed them because it kind of, I, I mean, ironic. I, I signed them because I thought they sounded like Blur, and I thought I've already got Oasis. Yeah. I mean, I'll have my version of Blur. But the truth is, they were, they were super funny. Animals are not like anybody. They're just they're just this insane. Uh, little Welsh band with anarchist viewpoints, you know. Yeah, so. psychotic Welsh, but yeah, psychotic Welsh. Yeah, band. Well, but actually, the war between Oasis and Blur, it, it, for me, it looks like uh, the war between football fans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I think, I, 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 I don't really think it was like that. I think look, they were both great, great bands that just got mixed up in the, the tabloid somehow. You know what I mean? You know, and. Uh, and it all got blown a bit out of proportion, but it was good for everybody. I mean, everybody saw yeah. the record. Blurb did great out it. Oasis did great out it. So it is what it is, you know. Yeah. So thank you so much for being uh, that's here. Okay. Thank you so much. And oh, I'm sorry, the last question from the comments. Is it possible okay. to have the second summer of love for the music generation? It might, be the, it might be the third summer of love. I think the second summer of love was Acid House in 1988, 89. Uh, that was mm -hmm. the second uh, the third summer of we might be having it because all the kids in England are doing illegal raves, you know. So yeah. we might, we may actually be having it. I hope we are. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean my, rave my daughter awesome. goes to all the raves. She's nineteen, and uh, Charlie goes to them all. You know. Yeah. Thank you so much for being You're here. Right. I'm really. Good I know I'm not traveling with you. Thank you so much. It's, You're all right, man. You, you don't but it's such an important dialogue with you, for us, for me oh, personally, you. for uh, our other member, Julia, who connected I was to the hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Hey, yes, Julia. Thank you so much. <laughs> our dream uh, of our, like, of our younger selves came true. Thank you so much. Have oh, a great day. Have a yeah. All right, man. Be good. See you soon. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. 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 Thank you.